Hi guys, George Glinski here from Toe the Line, joined today by the new BKB flyweight world champion, Dan Chapman. How are we doing, my man? Something chap, are you okay? Very well, thank you. Very well indeed. Obviously, new flyweight world champion. How does that feel? Uh, a lifelong dream fulfilled, perhaps? Yeah, 100%, George. I mean, it's something when I first got into BKB, the first thing I wanted to be was a world champion. And it's great that it's finally come across where I could, you know, get my skills and, and, my, and my character and my personality out there uh, and now become a BKP flyweight world champion. And like you said, I can't get over the support uh, and the backing that I've had from my community. You know, and I think a lot of people are now be starting to become fans from the BKB world, you know, and they've taken interest in, in what I do and, and my style. Obviously, it's very different to most BKB fighters. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon that I can just... You know, I'm in a position now where I can showcase my skills again, you know, after, you know, the, the long road from the amateurs, having the accident, you know, going through all those life obstacles. But now that perseverance and that hard work has now made me become a, you know, a flyweight world champion BKB. Sure. I wonder, having gone through so much, are you a man that believes in everything happening for a reason? It does seem as though these events have all come into place. No, to be honest with you, George, I, I, I'm not. I'm quite a realistic person. I just take things step by step. I don't say I'm going to do this or do that. You know, when I when I first came into BKB, that was my, my the prize at the end to become a world champion BKB. But I had a lot of obstacles to get there first. You know, there's going to be boys out there who want to beat me, and you know, and Jim has matched me every fight, and I've come victorious in every fight that led to me to be a world champion. So. You know, it was a bit of um, a little, you know, bit of a get down the letdown with George coming out of the last fight because obviously that would have been a great fight, and I think the fans wanted to see that fight. But I can only beat what's put in front of me. Um, I, I train very hard for the fight, like I always do. I stay in shape all year round, George, and I stay as professional as I can, and I try and set the example. And the fight, obviously, next Sean George again. Obviously, it fell through. Last time, the cut to the eye, and then John Spencer coming in, and you fought him for the world title. I wonder how you feel now. Is it? Uh, is there a worry there that this is going to fall through again, or are you pretty confident that this fight's definitely going to happen? No, I think, like you said, I think Sean, in his last interview uh, recently, he mentioned that he went through, obviously, some awful times, some awful obstacles. And I do share my love with Sean because... Any family to go through a miscarriage is, is absolutely awful. And I can understand why the camp was, you know, camp called off with the injury as well. So for me, it's like, you know, my full respect is with Sean, what him and his family went through. Um, it's an awful thing. And, you know, hopefully now um, the family, you know, are, go, are going to be more positive and they can get through, the, they got through this this little, um, but it's not little, this, this obstacle. And, you know, for me, is he seems to be in a good place to, to take the fight. So hopefully I can see the best Sean George on July the 3rd. But again, you know, I can't emphasise enough. i got nothing bad to say about George. There's no bad blood with me. Like, I know what he said in his interview, you know, calling me a C-U-N-T, Indian Trump man, whatever, you know. Um, but I'm not going to retaliate to that as... For me, is what he went through in that last camp is just like you know my respect is there. And I do feel for the family what they went through, but you know if that motivates Sean to say all these nasty things about me, to make him train harder or have this sort of bad blood, that's fine, you know. But nothing will change on fight night, you know. He's on about like you know taking me to the later rounds. I'm fit all year round. I can fall out of bed, you know, tomorrow and do twelve rounds with my eyes closed, you know. So. And, you know, that's his way of expressing himself, and that's great. But, you know, I know what I do. I think BKB know what I can do now. You know, my community know what I can do. My team knows what I can do. And, you know, it just, again, you know, I just need Sean to turn up on July the 3rd so I can display another masterclass of pure skill and show people what I'm all about again. Mm. So there seems to be bad blood on his side, at least. He did say that he genuinely dislikes you. But from your side, not a personal beef? No, if he's going to get upset with me calling him Gollum, you know, that's, that's up to him. You know, if, I, if, he's, if that's hurt his feelings and he's losing sleep over it, you know, since he is getting up at three in the morning to do his run and his bird bath, that's great. You know, but for me is, 
you know, there's no bad blood. You know, I'm confident what I do. It doesn't matter if I say nasty things, nice things. It isn't going to change the way I fight on fight night. I'm a professional. I take things seriously. I'm fit all year round. I've seen a million Sean Georges before. The only thing he's got going for him is being tough. And he, like he said, you know, he's trying to prove the point that he done well with Tyler Gooderjohn. And for me, it's like, I'm not Tyler Gooderjohn. He's got to understand that. You know, I'm levels. I, I rate Tyler. He's a great fighter. You know, but I'm, and to me and Tyler, I've got a great friendship. We, we speak, you know. Um, but like, Sean needs to understand that I know, you know, Tyler Gooderjohn. You know, he shows that I think names like Canelli or Canelli obliterated Sean George in that fight, in the prize fighter tournament. There was levels, you know. Um, and again, you know, when I fought James Canelli, I was nowhere near my best. I didn't even have a gym then. You know, mm. I was working in a primary school, working with children with disabilities and behaviour. You know, and I, it's me and winning that fight with James and going to school the next day with a black guy in a cut and hands like Sherman Clump. You know, <laughs> the, the kids thought I was a hero. I didn't <laughs> read I didn't even realise all the parents were watching it. I, I kept it quiet. I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> so I was put into school that day and the parents were going, well done, champ. <laughs> so I was like, um, it was like, have you seen Here Comes the Boom? <laughs> the film. <Okay. laughs> so, you know, um, but, you know, I got nothing bad to say about George. He, he's a veteran in the sport. He, he, you know, he's had 18 bare knuckles. But for me, as he said it himself, that I'm just going to be his toughest opponent yet. I've only had three bare knuckles. You know, that just speaks volumes on himself. So he knows what he's up against. Um, and I know what I'm up against, you know. So, you know, like we said, a lot of people saying it only takes one punch. Yeah, they're absolutely right. It only takes one punch. You know, and a lot of people, yeah, say, Dan, with gloves on. You know, yeah, no one will touch him. Yeah, you know, you're right. But what I do is, is very special, I believe in, because I put the, the hours, the minutes, the seconds in. For over 20 years, you can't take away the graft that I've done and the obstacles that I've overcome in my life to be where I am right now. And I know, and he says his life is tough, you know, going to work and, you know, and work. And, yeah, you know, we're all in the same boat, but we all got to work. We all hustling, doing that dough. You know, if he gets up at half past three, I get up, <laughs> you know, half past eight. It, it doesn't bother me. I'm still having my eight hours sleep. I'm still keeping myself, you know, very well nutrition. I drink plenty of water. I keep my I don't drink, I don't smoke. There's no camps for me. I'm always in shape. I'm ready to step in. I'm ready to have a 12 week camp. It doesn't really matter, you know, for me is you can't take away what I do with my ability. Also you can't take away that I'm always grafting. You put that together, that's a special ingredient. You know, you're a very humble character in the game, but you receive so much praise. I mean, even Sean there saying you'd be his toughest opponent. The man's fought Jimmy Sweeney, you know, the considered the greatest of all time. But ability alone, a lot of people believe you are the best the bare knuckle boxing has ever seen. How do you keep your feet on the ground with all that praise? Like I said, you know, uh, George, I I take things step by step. You know, I got to deal with Sean. I don't think about who's next. I don't say I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, at the end of the day. I am a humble person. I, I run a, a community gym. I work with all different kinds of people, you know, from council estate to doctors to nurses. You know, that life experience with having those kind of people in the same room, which would never happen in a gym. Mm. You know, I've got, you know, children, people who come to the gym who have who have lost their children and, and, and then work very hard to get the children back. And I've got nurses, I've got doctors. You know, I've got so many people who come to my classes it's so diverse. And for that to happen, I have to be doing something right. You know, it's, 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 it's a magic place, my gym, because I get people from all walks of life to turn up in the same room and build relationships and get fit and healthy. You know, so for me, is there's only one way to be as humble and down to earth. Uh, and again, you know, it's relating to people, it's sympathising, it's emphasising, you know. And from doing that, you know, at my local gym, I just... I just built a contract with a council in Wales mm -hmm. where I'm working with fathers who've lost relationships with their children, you know, wow. which is a fantastic, um, you know, spark to the gym that I've been able, privileged to be in the position to do the, the talks and, you know, and building relationships with these ones who need that support in, in my community. And, you know, working with children who 
uh, and in residential homes, you know, or being in and out of foster care from a young age like myself. So I'm hoping that they can look to me and uh, and look at me as if, you know, if Dan can do it, I can do it. And, you know, it's all about setting the example. So I'm not going to call people a little C-U-N-T. I can't afford to do that. It doesn't matter what angry someone makes me. You know, at the end of the day is I stay professional. I'm good at what I do. And for me, it's for the gym to have that spark on the gym. I need to be, you know, setting the example. It's as simple as that. And that's all I try to do. You know, there was, again, more, more criticism uh, from Sean George's fans saying that you had a, an easy run to the title. Obviously, you had three BKB fights. That's a roundabout way you're going to come in for a world title anyway. But I think a lot of people are forgetting that you fought James Canelli. And considering the weight disadvantage you had, it was a, a very impressive performance. So I wonder what you think of those, those thoughts. No, it's great. Like you said, you know, I don't, I don't get ever offended by people's comments and opinions on Facebook or Instagram, you know. I post my videos, I share my, my training content, and people love it. They like to see what I'm doing, and that's what I do. You know, I'm not going to hide my training. Until you get in that ring, that's when people realise how good good I am. Mm. That's when you really You can watch my training over and over. You know, for me, is I put it out there because that's what people want to see. And by those comments that people said about my the people I fought, well, you know, I've gone on a big Martin Thorne. I went mm -hmm. on to beat James Kennelly and I went on to beat Spence. Now, Spence wasn't my fault. You know, he stepped, fair play to, to John Spence. He stepped, pardon me, he stepped in last minute. Like, nobody mm -hmm. in PKB wanted to step in, but John did. You know, and, I, and fair play to him. I take my hat off to him. Let's give me this position. But even when I fought James Kennelly, James Kennelly was three stone heavier than me. I weighed on the scales with ankle weights on my waist, with keys mm -hmm. and phones in my pocket. I took Canelli's bare shots in one of the rounds when I dropped him and moved to the left and he hit me flush on the chin and I laughed. Mm. I'm a naturally 64 kilo <laughs> fighter, you know, so you can hit me on the jaw, you can do what you like, but, you know, I'm there, I'm there. If he wants a war, I'll give him a war. If he wants to box me, we can box, you know, so I, I, I put the hours and time that I can be any style that I want to be in that ring. You know, I can box, I can be hit or not hit, I can go in and stand toe to toe, I can go in and work on the inside and look pretty. Whatever game plan Sean George will have, you know, which I hope he will have a game plan because he's in trouble otherwise, um, just throw it at me. And that's, I'm, 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 I'm probably one of the most able fighters who can adapt, probably in the whole of the country, you know, and, and for me, is that's where I'm good at is adapting. You know, I work to what they work on. I see the picture. And when I'm after that first round or second round or seventh round, I'll keep adapting until I'm victorious. You listed a few examples of scenarios there. Obviously, we'll go into that. We'll have sponsors and thanks in a second. But I wonder, how do you see this fight going? What, what's going to be the end result? Well, Sean said in his last interview, I probably would have gone in for the stoppage in the last fight very mm. early. Uh, and fair play, you know, that's... That's exactly what I would have done. I'm not there to hang about. I'm there to, you know, um, break them and, you know, dismantle them, not just physically, but mentally as well. So whatever happens on July the 3rd, Sean George will remember me forever. He's, he's, he's thinking it's going to be the other way around and it's not. You know, like he said, I've seen a million Sean Georges. You know, um, I've, I've been at the highest level, at the lowest level. I started from a little village where I was from in Blind Winvy. It's not something, you know, that I haven't seen before. So, like you said, for me, is it's just like I said, is can Dan Chapman turn up without any injuries? You know, that's what everyone shouts out. You know, the last camp I was totally injury free. It's probably the best I've ever felt, um, and I'm just excited to get back in now and again showcase my skills. That's what it's all about. Brilliant. And now to showcase some important people in your life, sponsors and thanks. Who have we got to thank? Yeah, my sponsors, you know, I've got some big sponsors. I've got my local sponsors in my community. You know, I've got my local carpenters, plumbers. i got, like, people, clothing brands, butchers. Uh, you know, i got big sponsors there, like Wheels and Watches uh, and DNA Supplements. Like, these people have just got behind me, not because they they just want they see that I'm doing well. i built relationships with these people. And because i built relationships with these people... I want them to come on board and see the journey, whatever it takes us. 
So yeah. no, many of these sponsors will be coming up to watch the fight in the O2, which is great. As crowds come on, let's go. <laughs> um, so again, you know, I try to take as many people as I can on my journey. You know, I'm not. I don't have a circle. I can't have a circle because I do so much for the community. Um, I just want as many people to get on board, get behind me, and you know the values where I'm from. When when people support you, it becomes a very powerful thing. So you know, I'm just privileged that I do try my best to set the example. I'm not perfect. I make I make mistakes. You know, as I, you know, and as we all do. Um, but for me, it's like we said. You know, it's just I try and take as many people on this journey as I can. Class act as always. Dan, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Cheers, boss.